We all want love, but most of us don't want to date to get it. Because let's be honest, dating kind of sucks. But maybe it doesn't have to if we actually know what we're doing. Hi, I'm Kira Sabin, and this is Reinventing Dating, a smart and sweary podcast for all singles to learn the mindsets and skills to date with intention and confidence. Join me weekly as I break down the science and psychology behind what's working in our dating culture and what isn't. Every week I bring a new topic, trend, skill, or mindset that can help us get out of our own way to learn how to date for relationships that we actually want. Because love isn't broken, but dating kind of is. But I'm reinventing it. Let's do this. Well, hello there, sugar pantses. Welcome to another episode of Reinventing Dating. I'm Kira. And I am back this week. We are now in our fourth episode of Swipe Stories, The Reality of Online Dating. And you guys, I have just went down a rabbit hole. Oy vey! Holy shit! I have spent my whole morning updating information that I had from last year, looking at what's out there. So you can listen to this instead of actually going down that rabbit hole yourself, it's a little scary and weird place, so don't do it. But I will give you all the information you need to know about romance scams so you don't fall for them. And you can help friends, coworkers, family members, and make sure that we all know this information because holy shit, once again, there is a lot of scamming out there. It is prevalent. It is surprising the amount of money that people spend. And I'm going to absolutely go into that in just a moment. So I want to start really quickly by telling you something that I found in my research this morning is that the online dating success rate has changed. Now, if you've heard me on this podcast before, Just a couple weeks ago, I said it was about 12%. That's actually gone down. So overall, in the U.S., the success rate for people who meet on online dating apps, so become partnered, that's what they say, so not necessarily married, but partnered, is 10%. That's it, guys. 10 fucking percent. And let me just go through really quickly here. And I just posted this on Instagram yesterday and on TikTok this morning. So you can go look at the stats yourself. They're from the Pew Research Center in a study that they did in 2022. Let me tell you this. So partnered adults overall 10%. Now it's a little bit better for ages 18 through 29. That's 20%. 30 through 49 is 11%. If you are like me, 50 and above, 50 to 64 is 7%. And then if you are over 65, it is 4%. But this is also the information that I think is really interesting that we also need to know that for straight couples in general, even with those other uh, numbers, the success rate is only 9%. If you are LGB, and by the way, that does not include TQIA, just LGB, so lesbian, gay, or or identifies bi. That's actually a little bit bigger stat. That's 24%. But if you are a straight person over the age of, let's say, 40, this shit is not working. So let's get in to romance scams. I actually want to start off with something that was shared just this week on TikTok. My former clients are so good at sending me like, ooh, have you seen this? And I'll tell you guys, this one's a new one. This is absolutely new. I'm going to give you the basics. I will probably put a link to the original video in our information, our show notes. But here's the basics of it. All right. So a woman who is on Tinder, she matched with a guy who immediately asked her out on a date at a local restaurant. And she's like, why not? He confirmed the day of, so she arrives at the restaurant and gets stood up. Now, from what I hear out in the world of dating, this isn't brand new. It's not shocking. 
But here's what happens next. So she's sitting there. She goes on the app. The person that she was supposed to meet unmatched her. And so she's sitting there going, well, shit, I'm like dressed up. I have makeup on. Like, I might as well enjoy this. So she sits down. She eats a nice meal and heads home. She ends up Googling the restaurant or something on Facebook. And bam, it turns out that this restaurant has created a fake Tinder profile to match particularly with women who then come and eat and spend a bunch of money at their restaurant when their date doesn't show up so that they can make more money in their restaurant and they're using singles to fucking do it. It's not anything near the the types of scams that I hear, which are like, People who are overseas, people that you never meet. I mean, this is local. She had a date. She had uh, chatted a little bit. But I even did a little bit more research. This is pretty new. But I did a little bit more research out there. And it's true that sometimes restaurants or businesses are creating profiles on dating apps and they use bots. So they're not even talking to a real person. They use a bot to confirm and do all of this work for them. You guys, what the actual fuck? So before I dive into all of the statistics, all of the information on different types of romance scams, I just want to put out there, in case you're not picking up what I'm throwing down over here, online dating is hurting us. Not just restaurants, not just through money, but it's breaking our trust in love, in others, in the world in general. And it's already hard enough to be a single person out there dating, trying to find love, trying to find a relationship, let alone to then constantly be worried about, is this person a scammer? Is this person going to actually show up? Put rejection aside. Put the paradox of choice aside. Put even the success rate aside. This is not okay. And for all of my true crime fans out there, as I am also, just a reminder, if I am murdered, it is not my husband. My husband's fucking amazing. And we have an incredible relationship. The dating apps will come for me. So I'm just putting that out to the world to maybe protect myself a little bit and to be a little funny. But, you know, it's not completely funny because it's true. So out of all the online scams, online dating or romance scams are the biggest in the world. So that means that more people lost money last year to online dating scams than any other online scams. And I'm not talking like $30,000, which is still is like in a crazy amount of money that people would lose. No. So in 2020, the number was 304 million. And in 2021, it was 547 million. And in 2022, nearly 70,000 people reported a romance scam and reported losses hit a staggering 1.3 billion. So we went up from 547 million to 1.3 billion in the last year, with the average reported loss being 4,400. And by the way, that is from the Federal Trade Commission here in the States. So that was just in the U.S. And it's not just the amount of money. People are losing their lives. I ended up on a YouTube channel that has to do with catfishing and they have a whole series called Scamfished where they basically talk to somebody or a family member who thinks that their mom or their sister or their cousin is being scammed and these people do the legwork online to basically prove that this person is scamming their loved one. And it's nuts. 
People are selling their homes. They're getting divorced without ever meeting this person. And before I break down these different types of scams, I need to talk about AI's new role in romance scamming. So I found a great article online, a very dramatic title, When Love is a Lie, The Rise of AI-Powered Romance Scams. And I will say that as I was doing some research this morning, they actually said that the godfather of AI quit Google and says he regrets his life's work because it could be hard to stop bad actors from using it for bad things. Now, I don't know what actors have to do with any of it, but yes, there's obviously going to be some bad things that probably come to this. And I think romance scams are one of them. So I found this article and I'm going to tell you straight up, I am just reading parts of it because they did it so well and said it so concisely. I will put it in the show notes so you can read it yourself. But I just wanted to walk through what they said and weigh in on it a little bit more because I think that this is really fucking important if you're out there and if you're choosing to meet people not only on apps, right? Because this isn't just on apps. In fact, I believe that some apps are watching for this. So they'll ask you to come over to WhatsApp, to Facebook, to Instagram, to other types of social media because they don't scan for this in other social medias. So that's one of the biggest things to watch for is when you start a conversation somewhere and they ask to move it somewhere else. Or they're showing up in your Facebook to tell you how beautiful you are, although they don't know you or know nothing about you. Or they're there to say how interested they are in getting to know you, though, once again, they don't know you and know nothing about you. But let's talk about how AI is showing up in these scams for you to watch for. So first of all, AI can generate a lot of things. So it can generate now, obviously, text. It can actually generate images. It can generate videos and audio. So this content can be used by scammers to create fake online personas that seem more convincing than ever before. So one of the ways they do this is by deep fakes. Now, a few years ago, like 2021, you may have seen some TikToks that had Tom Cruise on them doing kind of Tom Cruise doing wacky things. And I think it's fair to say that overall, Tom Cruise's vibe as an actor is not wacky things besides jumping up on the couch on Oprah that one time. So everybody was like, wait, what's happening? We found out that this guy who looks like Tom Cruise and had been told that his whole life used AI to basically cover his face to look like Tom Cruise and was able to then through that and the voice make it look like Tom Cruise was doing these things. Now, guys, that's scary as fuck. Everybody kind of like lost their shit when it first came out because they're like, wait, what do we trust then? If this is true, then anybody can pretend they're basically anybody anywhere online. That is a major fucking problem. So deep fake Tom Cruise, I'm not too worried about him trying to date you guys. But with the rise of this deep fake technology, scammers can create highly realistic fake images and videos that are becoming impossible to distinguish from real ones. Deep fakes are created using machine learning algorithms that can analyze thousands of images and videos to create a highly accurate digital copy of a person's face or body. Once the deep fake is created, it can be used to create convincing videos or images that look like a real person. And one of the most concerning developments in the realm of deepfakes is the potential use of the technology in real-time video chats. With deepfake video technologies, scammers can, cre can create convincing videos of themselves in real time so they can be having a conversation with you and it looks like a human and it sounds like a human, right? But it's not actually who you think you're talking to, which makes it even more difficult to identify that it's a romance scam. So this is a big problem because one of the things that online dating or people who are, are talking about catfishing or romance scams keep saying is, if that person won't video chat with you, they're most likely 
a romance scammer. So let's say that they put up a picture of somebody or created a picture of somebody through this algorithm. They can then take that picture, put it over like their face so that it looks like the person in the picture, but it's not. And they can talk to you and answer your questions and chat with you in real time as that fake person. And right now they're saying you can't distinguish that it's not a real person. So that information or that suggestion in the past of it's probably a romance scam if that person won't get on video with you, that's not necessarily applicable anymore. I know, scary. Next, the impact of voice synthesis in AI-generated romance scams. So another tool being used by romance scammers is voice synthesis, also known as, known as text-to-speech technology. This technology allows scammers to create realistic sounding voice messages and even conduct phone conversations that are entirely automated. By using this voice synthesis, scammers can create a sense of intimacy and trust with their victims. They can use a synthesized voice to leave romantic voicemails or even call their victims and speak to them directly. The synthesized voice can be made to sound real like a real person, which can make it difficult for victims to identify the fraud. So, holy shit, right? So you're talking to somebody, all of a sudden they leave this sweet, I'd love to get to know you more message and everything else and you get excited and you get butterflies in your stomach and you don't even realize that is actually not a real person or they don't actually sound like that and maybe they're not, maybe that's not their accent, maybe that's not where they're from. So we can't even trust audio anymore. Next, the use of chatbots in AI-powered romance scams. So chatbots are AI-powered programs that can mimic human conversation and are often used by scammers to create a sense of intimacy and trust with their victims. Here's the interesting things, guys. They can put this on automatic. So somebody may not even be talking to you, though you think that they're talking to you, right? Because they're just using these templates of they've looked at what people want to hear, what people want them to say, what creates intimacy very quickly, tons and tons of compliments. They might get vulnerable right away, talking about a situation that they're in a loveless marriage, that they just got dumped, they just lost a spouse, something so that you feel sorry for them. And that fake vulnerability still builds intimacy. They may even notice from your social media that you recently got dumped or heartbroken or divorced. Maybe you're grieving because you just lost your spouse. They can easily collect this information online and use it to build, once again, fake intimacy. So just as I would use a chatbot on my website because I do if you look in the corner it just says it's got a little picture of me it says hey this is Kira ask me a question but that actually comes to me I answer back there are some small things that I can put that are responses like when's your next program or can I work with you in one or how do I find your podcast I can do something like that and it'll have information there but this is much higher next level where they're programmed to engage in a dialogue with victims and can even learn from the responses to become more convincing over time. They use flattery, compliments, and other emotional manipulation tactics to build rapport with the victim, making them feel special and loved. And once the chatbot has built a relationship with the victim, it can be programmed to request money or personal information, asking for financial assistance, or persuading the victim to share personal information such as a credit card or a social security number. Holy fuck. So there was a lot of like technical jargon there. So let me just break down basically what I'm hearing. That right now, what someone says to you, the video they may send to you, the photo they may have up, the audio that they're sending to you, all of those can be completely created by AI. So there is a possibility, and I've shared this before, they say about 30% or more of people online are straight up romance scammers who are there 
100% not to find love. They're probably already married or in a relationship, but to scam people out of their money. And maybe you felt like you are so smart. That's not going to happen to you because of the signs. And what this is basically saying is like, no one's safe here. If you are online dating or even just on Facebook or Instagram and someone is sliding in, which by the way, they do. Although I 100% talk about being married. I 100% talk about my relationship with my husband for a fucking living. And I still, I'm talking multiple times a week, will get somebody sliding into my DMs like, you're beautiful. And I'm like, you're an asshole. Don't do that shit. If for some reason you're actually doing that to meet people, understand you're not going to get the responses that you want to get because people are looking out for scammers and they should be. And honestly, if that's the way you're starting conversations, come on, we can do better. So now I want to walk through some of what these scams are, what they look like, how to spot them, some very common ones, and then what to do if you think you're being scammed. I know this has been a pretty big conversation lately after Tinder Swindler, which I did do a podcast. And at the time, I remember talking to some of my clients, some of my grads, or just people on social media who are singles. And there was a lot of victim shaming and victim blaming. How did she not get this? This would never happen to me. But $1.3 billion makes me say, These people are fucking good at this. This is what they do for a living. They have created and become master manipulators. So don't get so confident. Don't get so cocky that this would never happen to you. Because there's a lot of unassuming people that shit like this happens to every single day. So I found this fantastic fucking article on ready for it reader's digest that's right we're going back to 1984 to your grandma's bathroom reader's digest because i'm guessing older people are probably i don't want to say easier to scam but probably a very big target they tend to be home a little bit more they're retired they may be lonely so let's dig in to this amazing article for reader's digest which it really was And I'm going to share some of the things that they shared, and I will make sure I put it in the the show notes so you can read it too. One of the things they say is once you figure out how to spot a romance scammer, that's what we're going to call it, their shtick becomes kind of cliche and obvious. There are some common traits of these con artists, and many recycle the same personas and narratives. Now, male scammers tend towards the persona of someone who is financially secure, such as a business owner or professional woman. And then female scammers tend to create personas featuring attractive young women under 30 years old who are financially dependent and need somebody to help them. They all, of course, describe themselves as honest or trustworthy. Now, I want to sidestep for just a moment to talk about something called love bombing. You may have heard of it. It's become much more of a common expression in the last couple of years. But I think it's super duper important for us to understand what love bombing is why it's not real because the very people who are falling for these scams are literally thinking that they're falling in love with someone because our society has taught them again and again that love comes quick it comes easy and if somebody says that they love you and keep saying it that it must be true but I want to gently remind all of you in this moment that love takes time relationships are complicated and somewhat messy. And anybody who is telling you that they're in love or falling in love with you after a few days is not being honest. That's not the way love works. That's certainly not the way relationships works. And the sooner that we can all get on the same page about that, then people who are out there, the love bombers, the narcissists, the con people, is con people, is that the right? phrase. I'm not sure. When we all become educated and knowledgeable of this stuff, we take away their power. The more you fucking know. All right. First romance scam. And I have had people who I'm not even interested in 
reach out and try to do this to me on Facebook, on Instagram. It is a very common scam, and it is a member of the military. Scammers impersonating a member of the U.S. military often claim there is some reason the military can't provide needed funds, and thus the victim needs to help. They often claim to be deployed overseas and cannot meet in person, and they may use stolen photos of military members to create fake profiles. They'll say they need money for a plane ticket back and other expenses to travel back to the United States. Naturally, they tell their victim they can't wait to meet them and finally be together. So the U.S. military scam is so common that the U.S. Army has produced a detailed fact sheet on spotting romance scammers posing as American soldiers posted abroad. I will add that to the show notes. So this is a real thing. The next scam, the oil rigger. Another common example of a romance scam persona is someone working remotely on an oil rig. They may be making plenty of money and will flaunt this. Yet, they'll also ask you to do financial favors for them. Oil rig scammers often work in teams, though a single scammer may pose as many different people during the con. Here's how the big payoff works. One of the scammers will contact you with the news that your love interest has been badly injured. They need your money to save their life. The message says, and this will be a big ask, you'll get the money back as soon as possible distraught at the thought of losing your love, you help. And when the scammer asks for money, it usually follows the same template. It's a matter of life and death. There's no one else they can turn to. They don't have any family or friends who can help. And it's amazingly urgent. Any delays could have cataclysmic consequences. Another common trait of scammers is before the big ask, scammers will make small requests to gauge whether or not it's likely that you'll be susceptible to the con when a huge emergency comes up. I know, gross. Next, the international worker. The most common scam is the businessman or woman who is away on business. A woman named Shannon Peel told the story of one fraudster posing as a businessman from Canada who was in China buying antiques for his business. It took all about two days, she said, before he was asking me to send him 50000 to get new purchases through customs and come home to see me. When I told him I couldn't, he asked for 25000 When I said I didn't have it, he told me to get a loan. When I said no, he said that's what people who love each other do. There are some common major red flags that your long-distance lover is conning you. These romance scammers say they'll be home in a month or two or suggest getting to know each other online. They may claim to be from the U.S., yet they use awkward language and don't seem to understand North American culture. Their personal details change and they can't keep their stories straight. Watch for all of this. And for that matter, I can't tell you the amount of stories that I hear of people meeting people in the States who are also from the States. They start a long distance relationship and that person has a whole fucking double life. They already have a spouse. They already have children. They may not be asking for money, but that doesn't mean they're not asking for your time, your attention, your emotional commitment. And they're not available in any way. Romance scams don't have to be just about money. I have had this happen to multiple clients of mine. Long distance relationships now may feel possible and easier, but there's just as much chance of a scam. This is why I feel like online dating is doing us zero favors. Okay, the next one is the sugar mama or sugar daddy. Sugar mama and sugar daddies prey on younger people, often students, nurses, teachers, single parents, or others who might be in need of extra cash. These scammers tell the victim they'll pay them in a weekly allowance just to talk to them, not for sex or nude photos, but then they say they need a portion of it back for an unexpected bill. They send a check or money from a stolen credit card, and then when you send the money back and get caught, the check bounces or the credit card company reverses the charges. So not only have victims lost the money that they thought they were getting, but they've sent their own money to the scammer as well. And if you can't cover the payment that you sent, the bank can charge you with fraud. So not only does the scammer get your money, you end up fighting a fraud charge where you could be thrown in jail. This is real shit. All right, next, the widow or widower. This usually starts with a sob story that they're a widow or widower, maybe with kids, 
a very emotional narrative, which serves an important purpose of wanting to gain your trust. Now, these scammers are likely to prey on other widows or widowers, offering not only the illusion of romance, but that of family, something that the victim might be missing. As with many other romance scams, this is all about the money. And this, and in this case, the scammers' pleas for money are likely to be related to medical expenses. But it's all fake. Next, we have the crypto pusher. Now, this is one of the latest romance scams to hit the dating market. And it's also a type of cryptocurrency scam. The scammer usually contacts the victims via an online dating site or WhatsApp. And after building trust, the criminal then pressures the victim to buy cryptocurrency and deposit it into a legitimate looking crypto trading app that's actually controlled by the scammer. According to the article, any legitimate dating site or social media platforms hold, holds potential. But scammers are big fans of Match.com, OkCupid, Plenty of Fish, Tinder, and of course, Instagram, Facebook, and Google Hangouts. Here's a couple more small signs that this might be a scammer you're talking to. First of all, you never meet the person. Maybe they even are saying they want to meet you, but then they don't show up. And that's because something terrible has happened. Their mother has died, for instance, which may lead them to asking you for money. Next, you might feel like you met your soulmate. They may seem to have the same interests as you. They may have the same ideas and desires, but that's not a coincidence. People can find out a lot about you on social media, LinkedIn, things like that. You're in a whirlwind romance. The romance scammer will shower you with attention and affection. They want to be in contact with you all the time and is making plans for the future. You think you're in love, but once again, that's really love bombing. They may even send you flowers, candy, small gifts, knowing that it's a small investment for what they'll be getting from you. Finally, your new love will value privacy. They're going to maybe try to get you off online dating apps. They're going to try to move you into a different space. And they're going to start sharing with you things that you can tell no one. If you think quickly about the Tinder swindler, he started telling a story about his business partner and people trying to kill him. She wasn't just sending him money for fun. She literally thought this was life or death. So finally, what happens if you do think you're being scammed or you have been scammed? Number one, report the scam to law enforcement. You may be embarrassed and think there's nothing they can do, but this is how we also track people because most fraudsters have many victims. Next, report it to the dating app or social media site. And next, block the person from everywhere that you can. I can't say this enough, never send money. You are never going to know somebody well enough that you've never met from online that you should be sending them any money in the mail. And finally, if and when you feel comfortable, share your story. Because only when we tell people what's happened to us can we let others know what to watch out for. You cannot even tell me out of the $1.3 billion that people in the U.S. lost in romance scams last year, that that number is probably low because how many people didn't report it? So you've just heard all about AI, these scammers, fucking restaurants scamming people on dating apps. You might be saying to yourself, how do I prevent this? How do I make sure that nothing like this happens to me? It's a great question. And I want to talk about some strategies as well as some mindsets. Let's start with some strategies. Number one, I'm just going to say, get the fuck offline. I'm going to say it. Number one, I am just going to say it. Let's get the fuck offline. We have to do it. We have given this a chance. We have hoped and dreamed that the apps and the algorithms would help us find love. And the success rate is the conclusion that it's not working. Not only is it not working, 
People are losing money. People are losing time. People are losing energy. People are losing trust. People are losing hope. So I am always going to encourage you to get the fuck offline because real love and real relationships are in real life, not on your technology. So if you're like, Kira, I'm not willing to do that. Let's talk. Next thing, meet quickly. This scammer can't scam if you are meeting them right away. Do not accept messages from overseas. Do not accept people who are, quote unquote, just temporarily gone because they're in the military or they're a scientist or they're something else. This is all part of it that they're like, I'm overseas, but I'm coming home soon and I want to meet somebody to be in love with forever and ever. And let's just talk now, but soon I'll be home and then we'll get to be together. Don't fall for that shit. They're either there and they can see you in the next couple of weeks or they can't. Use that as a guideline. Let them know after you guys talked a couple of times, I love to meet people in real life, just a half an hour coffee date. Are you up for it? Get in real life. Not only, once again, is that where love actually exists and connection is actually created and intimacy and is actually built, if you keep encouraging someone to meet up, which I know is scary, but scarier having somebody take thousands of fucking dollars from you and leaving you feeling hurt, alone, and probably a little angry and feeling not great about yourself. Do you want to know why no one likes dating? Because dating is vulnerable. You have to put yourself out there. But if you're only willing to put yourself out there online because it's a little less scary and a little less vulnerable, then you need to check yourself because that, once again, is not where love is created. So if you're going to online date, let them know within days, hey, let's go grab a cup of coffee. Let's go grab some gelato. Let's go grab some tea. Get across from them. Next, do not, I repeat, do not send them pictures of you in any kind of compromising situation. That can be letting somebody know where you live. That could be a picture of your child that they're like, I'm going to now spread this around so that your child's not safe online. Who the fuck knows? But certainly never send nudes, never send things because... This is one of the romance scams that doesn't get talked about, which is you get to know somebody, you start to like somebody, of course, because they are complimenting you. They are working this system to get you to trust them so they can take advantage of you. So they are going to come on strong. They are going to be telling you all the things that probably feel good temporarily and you want to hear. And then they'll be like, let me see some boobs or let me see that cock or let me see. You naked. I don't know why I just said the word cock so weirdly, but people do it. And then they turn around and say, guess what? I now have these photos of you and I'm going to send them to your company. I'm going to send them to your boss unless you pay me this amount of money. That person's basically blackmailing you and who's to know when that's going to stop. Even if they're like, I erased it. Did they? Now you are in your own personal hell. Don't do that. Not when it can be prevented. Next, and this is from the article, we don't share personal information or send money that you haven't met in person multiple times. That includes sending gift cards. That's a way for people to get money and scam the system. Sharing sensitive information like credit card numbers, social security numbers, passwords, any of it. They also mentioned watch for inconsistency. More often than not, romance scammers will be attempting to scam multiple people at once, right? They're trying to make some money. If their story changes or they have trouble remembering details that you've previously shared or they shared, that's a sign that they're probably a scammer. So those are strategies. Get offline. Meet people in real life. If you're going to online date, meet up with them right away. Don't share pictures, info, anything that could be compromising. And if you don't believe me, go over to TikTok to a guy named Jose Monkey, and he uses the webs, the interwebs, to look at probably about a two to three second video, and he can find the exact location where that person is. So let's talk about 
some mindsets we can have when we are dating or online dating to prevent ourselves from being scammed. And these mindsets are going to prevent you from not only being financially taken advantage of, but emotionally and mentally also being taken advantage of. Which sucks too! First, if it seems too good to be true, you know the saying, it probably is. That's right, if somebody from out of nowhere is coming in and saying they want to know you, they want to care about you, they want to be in a relationship with you, they possibly love you, they think you're beautiful, all of this, come on, guys. That's not real. That doesn't make sense. If you're like, huh, that's a little weird. We haven't really spent time together or talked too much. And they're saying this. Then it's probably a scam or love bombing. Be skeptical of anyone who seems too perfect or too eager to establish a relationship with you. First of all, you should be skeptical of that for the pure fact that A, once again, they don't know you. They have not spent real time with you. So the feelings that they're sharing or the compliments they're sharing are completely ungrounded. I know when we worry about maybe how we look or our body or our age, it becomes very easy for someone to come in and say they think you're beautiful. They think that who you are is beautiful right now. And fuck if we don't want to hear that. Fuck if we do not want somebody to love us and accept us for who we are or where we're at. So it becomes easy to want to believe these people. Don't. Anybody, by the way, this includes in real life. Anybody who is showering you with compliments, keeps telling you how amazing you are, puts you up on a pedestal, maybe gifts, flowers, chocolates, all of the things, that is love bombing, not love. I teach that in my What is Love workshop, which is free on my new site. Because as you will hear me say again and again on this topic, dating, trying to connect with people, meeting new people should not be this hard, this unsafe, emotionally and physically as it has become. It shouldn't. We've now just assumed we're going to meet dicks, we're going to meet jerks, we're going to meet people who are rude, they may slide a dick pic in there. There is something wrong when this becomes a normal part of the dating culture. It is no wonder to me why so many people are choosing to be alone, which by the way, I am 100% always supporting but I also want people who want love and want a relationship to get to try for that in a way that feels okay. All right, guys, that is it for today. Wowza, zowza, wow, huh? That is a lot of information. Listen to it again. But more importantly, share this everywhere. Because if we all are on the same page about what bullshit this is, how unsafe and unhealthy this is, we can all start to get offline and meet in real life where love and beautiful relationships actually are. If you're not yet, come on over, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. I'm also on Facebook. If you love it, subscribe, leave a review. I'll be here next week, but until then... Meet love halfway.